How's everybody doing today? Good? <laughs> All right. OK, so I'm going to talk to you guys about one-way versus two-way data binding in React and AngularJS. So, so this is going to be about how applications are organized and the channels that data is allowed to flow through those systems. So a little on organization and structure. Um, Angular is an MVC front-end framework. So that is a model view controller, where the model is your application, um, the view is the app's screen representation, and then the controller is the intermediary between the two that defines the way the user uh, interface reacts to the user input. So over here on the right, we have this design patterns book, which is one of the first times that the MVC pattern was kind of talked about. It's from 1994. Really interesting book that I had a little chance to read a tiny bit about. Um, and it talks about a lot of different other orientations for object oriented, or ways to organize programs for object oriented programming. Um, an important thing to notice is that the controller sets up a, it, with the decoupling of the model and the view, it sets up a subscribe notify protocol between the two. Um, React, on the other hand, is only a view library. So it's a much less opinionated structure, some might say. Um, so you have your application, then you have your views, um, and then those views have child views, those child views have child views, and so on. Um, and that means that the direction of the data only goes down. Um, and in order to kind of get this dynamic uh, interplay between the application and the view, you need to do callbacks. Um, this is a much more functional programming paradigm kind of situation we have here, but this can lead to callback hell, which is not fun unless you use Redux flux architecture, which is the kind of way to get the model back into the uh, React setup. So without further ado, let's do a little coding. Um, so I set up this very, very, very simple application where we have input tags um, in React and Angular that are just dynamically um, changing p tags below them. Super, super awesome. So what I did in, uh, over here is just an HTML file. And it's kind of really interesting um, little exercise, if you guys ever want to do it, to put you know, multiple kind of frameworks in one file. It's very frustrating at first, but also just a nice little thought experiment. So up here, we bootstrap um, Angular. And we have our Angular script. And then below it, we have the HTML that's being modified by that Angular um, code. So for some of you guys who haven't really seen Angular before, just a little bit of a catch up. Something you have to do is you initialize Angular module that defines an app. Then off of that app, you define a controller. And into the controller, you do this thing called dependency injection. And one of the most important dependencies you can inject is dollar sign $scope. And to reactors, that's kind of like state and props. It's like the, I like to think about it, the traffic cop at the uh, middle of a traffic circle kind of directing traffic. And you put um, properties on that object. And depending on which controller you're using, um, that makes that data accessible to other parts of your program. So down here, like I said, we put uh, ng app. We put our controller. And then this ng model is the other important little part of the equation. So ng model, we uh, link it up to the part of the controller that we want it to talk to. And that allows us to have this two-way data binding, where it changes, um, it adds the data onto our little target right here. So not a lot of code, cool little functionality. Juxtapose that against React. We also bootstrap our React. We have our HTML and div element. And then we have our script for um, React. And for that to work, um, we have the, the value of the input is controlled entirely by the render function right here. Um, and the only way that, the up, that you can update this value is from the component itself, which is done by this on change event handler, which in turn calls this handle change function that we've written. So this is just an example of how you need to do a callback in order to get a kind of two-way data binding situation. So if we kind of take a step back and look at how much code we have down here, it's like 20, 30 lines. And up here, it's you know, maybe 5 or 10, with spaces included. Um, so moving right along. So if we take the implications from this, Angular is kind of more structured. And some might say it's a steeper learning curve, because you have to figure out what, exactly what a controller does, exactly what a factory does, how do you initialize all these things. But once you get it off the ground, there's a lot less code that you have to write on your end. Um, 
But that magic that kind of happens behind the scenes could lead to potential bugs down the line, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, React, on the other hand, the structure is a lot more left up to you, the developer. So you write it and you know it. It's a lot more understandable about which where, where the data is flowing and how it's getting around. Um, like we said, you use more callbacks unless you're using Redux. Um, and there's a trade-off when you have less magic, more boilerplate where you have to write. So a little bit of history and popularity trends between the two. Um, down here we have a graph of Google Trends because you know if you search for something that is a definitive litmus test for how much is actually being used. Um, red is the Angular and green is React. So you kind of see that over the last year React has kind of made a big jump. Um, and up at the top here we see a little downtick in Angular. So Angular is definitely the incumbent, React is the insurgent. Um, and up here we have a little bit of data about different front end frameworks like uh, Ember and Backbone, which are much more akin to Angular because they use MVC, and some big websites and people who have actually used them. But where's the love? Um, Black Eyed Peas are wondering that. They haven't been putting out much music recently. And um, so what causes all the hate between the two? Where's the vitriol coming from? Well, Angular actually has some issues, and particularly at scale. So when your applications get very, very big, when you're doing a lot of inputs, a lot of forms, um, there's this thing called the digest cycle and dirty checking that happens, where all of the individual values that you have set up need to be um, kind of, they have to all get checked. And if you're using the ng repeat, which is similar to map in, um, in React, that's how you kind of take a, a data set and just dynamically repeat it into your, into your view. Every single time you need to check whether or not those have been changed and that's a lot less um, efficient than React's way of doing it with the virtual DOM where you only check things that need to be changed and do that accordingly. Um, so React's issues, um, there's a lot of boilerplate code like we saw. It's a little bit slow to start up and might not be the best for smaller quick projects. Redux is a conceptual hurdle. I myself kind of dealt with that a little bit, starting to get it though. Um, and then, you know, it's still a young language, so community conventions are still developing and some people don't like that. But, you know, us as developers, that gives us, you know, some, some say in the matter, which is really cool. And then, oddly enough, some people really hate JSX. I think it's pretty sweet. Um, and Angular 2, uh, something to think about. It's not an update, it's a total rebuild. And one of the things that, um, one of the things that out of the box is being taken out is this two-way data binding. And there's this really funny uh, article from this guy talking about whether or not that's going to be, you know, a, even more vitriol than there is already with Angular 1. So some key takeaways. Um, one and two-way data binding, they're important, but keep in mind these are just small parts of these larger frameworks and libraries, which are very, very multifaceted and have a lot of different interesting things going on. Um, so which one is better? It totally depends on your situation and your preference. It depends on what your you know, your experiences, what you're more comfortable with, and really what the situation is going to dictate for you. Um, and why so much hate between the two? I don't really know. I think this is going to pass. You know, in the next couple months or the next year, somebody else is going to write a framework or a library and will make React, you know, try to defend the situation. Maybe one of you guys will do that. We'll see. But um, here's some additional reading, and thanks very much. <laughs>